Hello my quilting friends! Leah Day here with a new video for the Machine Quilting Party. Today we're quilting Matrix in the Prism Path Baby Quilt. This is our last design and our last video for this project. So quilting this design is very simple with walking foot style quilting, but you know it can be just a little tricky because we're going to have to rotate and reposition the quilt quite a bit. So let's jump on the machine and learn how to quilt this together. So at this point we have taken out a whole lot of our pens so it's really easy to slide the quilt into the machine and we're going to start knocking out the matrix design that we have drawn on the fabric. So make sure to watch the other video on marking your quilts and pretty much there's no right or wrong place to get started. I'm just going to pick a point in kind of the middle of the quilt and that's where I'm going to drop my foot. So I'm going to drop my foot down and then use the hand wheel to drop the needle down. Put that all the way down into the bottom of the machine and then keep rotating. And you rotate until the needle starts to drop back down again and then give that top thread a tug. And that ensures that the top threads make a complete rotation through the bobbin and then you can pull up those thread tails and tuck them underneath the foot. And I always like to sink my needle right back down again in the same spot just so it's in the right place. Okay, so Matrix is a curvy design and you can see this line that I have marked just in case that has gone a little bit faint. I'm going to grab my marking pencil and darken it up here for you so you can really see it. So we're going to be stitching that curve from that point. And we want to be careful with this because if you start to really twerk the quilt uh, it can cause some issues. It can cause a little bit of a ripply pleaty kind of thing. So whenever I go into that curve, I'm going to lift up on the foot, shift the quilt around, and get it to where the foot is running straight with the curve. Now that won't last very long because obviously it's a curve uh, and it's going to be start angling in a different direction. So as soon as I stitch far enough where it feels like, okay, it's kind of angling off again, rather than try and stitch and twist the quilt at the same time, I'm going to again lift up on that foot, release the pressure on the quilt, set it back down again, and begin stitching again. So this is going to go a little slower than our straight lines. We're going to do some these, these stops and shifts. That's what I'm going to call it. We're going to stop and shift. Uh, and of course, the amount that you have to stop and shift depends entirely on the line that you marked and how curvy it is. Here I'm kind of curving down and to that point. So I just need to watch that angle as I make my way around and down. So I'm going to kind of curve it just a bit. And I do want to hit that point in particular. So there we go. I hit that point. Now it's time to rotate a bit. And this is the thing, you know, fitting a design into a space on your quilt like this does make it more challenging. What would be easier to quilt in the section that would require less rotation? Well, more straight lines, certainly. You know, you could do a, a simple grid would probably be a little bit easier because you could keep the quilt kind of positioned in the same way. Um, but I want you to see that yes, you can make design decisions that require a little bit of rotation and it's not the end of the world. It's not going to be a deal breaker. It's not going to take so much time shifting the quilt around a bit that it makes it really, really hard to do or really, really hard to finish. So here we go. I've got just a nice gentle curve here. And honestly, that's the key. When you go to mark this design on your quilt, aim for a gentle curve through those areas and you're not going to have to shift a lot. You know, it's going to be more minimal. I gotta say though, how much handling I have done of this quilt already to this point, because I already went on ahead and stitched all of my straight lines, my lines that I marked have gone a little faint. And this is what you want. I mean, the last thing you want are your quilting lines to stay in the quilt and be permanent. You know, it, that's the disappearing act. You want them to go on, you want to quilt over them, and then you want them to disappear. So it's a, I think it's okay that you have to sometimes go in and just darken those lines up just a bit. I don't think that's a deal breaker either. 
And of course you can always find the tools that you see in the videos, the marking pencils, my gloves, everything that I'm using. You can find all of them at leahday.com slash shop where we have a quilt shop and that helps support me creating these videos for you to learn about quilting. Okay, I'm gonna shift around again. And I hope you can see, sometimes I just leave the quilt kind of bunched up here. That doesn't bug me a bit because that's all behind the machine. That's all over here. And this area here to the front is much more flat. I'm gonna back up so that way you can really see what's going on here to the front of the machine too. So as long as this area right in front of my hands, uh, it, sorry, right in front of the needle is flat, then I can quilt. And it doesn't matter what's going on with the quilt behind the machine. It doesn't matter what's going on in the arm of the machine. So long as that area right in front of the needle, and it could be just an inch or two, you know, right in front of the needle, as long as that area is flat, then I can stitch into my design. There we go. Now this line is interesting and it's gonna hit right up against that line and then we're gonna change direction. And that's another thing to be doing is constantly be looking at where you are on the quilt and kind of get a little game plan for where you're going next. Uh, I could have kind of just glanced at that and thought that I was stitching off into the batting and that's not what I was doing. Now it looks like I undershot that line just a little bit so I'm gonna hand guide. That means I just use the hand wheel to turn the needle and I hand guided that last stitch so it's exactly where I want it to be. Okay. So this all looks good. Any kind of time you just feel like things aren't quite right or there's lint in your way or there's a stray thread or something, just take a second to pick at it and get it where you want it. Okay, so now I wanna show you right here on the edge what I think would maybe cause you some problems. And, and this is what I'm talking about when I say torquing it. So you see how I'm stitching and rotating the quilt at the same time. So here I'm going into another deep curve and then trying to stitch and rotate it at the same time. I think that that could cause some issues, not necessarily with stitching, you know, the perfect curve. I mean, although that one tended, it didn't look, I don't think that one looked quite as good as my other ones. That's part of it. But I think the major issue that could happen here is ripply fabric and that's whiskering. Uh, and that's usually a precursor to pleats. And you can see we are gonna be overlapping this line of stitching multiple times. So if we start to get ripples through the section, as we stitch back over it, that's where we could start to get pleats and puckers and just some issues on our quilt that really wouldn't look as nice. So that's why I'm advising to, if you are stitching that curve, just every once in a while, stop, lift up on the foot, give it a little rotate rather than trying to stitch and rotate the quilt at the same time. Okay, so that line got knocked out. Stitch off into the batting. And because it's in the batting area, I can clip those thread tails short. And whenever we finish up this quilt, you can find actually a tutorial, leahday.com slash prepare for binding. You can check that out. We go around the edge of the quilt with a victory lap. And that is super, super helpful. And it will lock all of that stitching, lock all of your quilting really nice and secure. Okay, so here's the beast. <laughs> this is gonna be the not fun side. We are gonna quilt this design going in the opposite direction. And that means we're gonna have a lot more quilt in the arm of the machine here. So I'm gonna tie off and bury this thread tail so it's out of my way. And I just, when I'm doing this, I tie off the thread tails in an overhand knot and then run a cheater needle. This is a self-threading needle through the quilt. Double check that it doesn't come out the back. I'm just running that in the middle layer of the quilt and pop those threads in and send them through the middle. And you can find a much more detailed tutorial on that step-by-step -step and really nice close up so you can see how that works. I will make sure to link that video up too. Okay, so this is gonna be the tricky side. I'm gonna pull up my thread right here and we're gonna be stitching this way and you can see this is gonna end up shoving a lot more quilt into that arm. 
and drop my needle down again here, get going. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go off the feel of it. We're gonna stitch about an inch or two at a time and I'm gonna stop more often. So I'm gonna stitch down. Okay, and then now I need to rotate just a bit. And following that curve that I marked. And here's the other thing about marking is, you know, if one of the curves that you marked was just too challenging to stitch, if it's just at a really awkward angle, it can change. Because if your marks disappear, well then no one will know that you meant to stitch something different. So don't worry about it if your curves end up, you know, slightly different from what you marked. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now I'm repositioning, how to push and pull some of the quilt through, because now I need to stitch this next line going in this direction. There we go. Stop and shift ever so slightly. Make sure it's looking good. The nice thing about this matrix design is how big it is and how fast it's gonna flow over your quilts. It's basically, you know, stitching from the center. So we've got two different lines, these kind of curvy zigzag lines across the space. So you can say, well, you're gonna stitch from the center and you're gonna do that twice and then wash and repeat three more times. So a total of six lines of quilting total. And that will finish off that entire section. And then we've got only one other section in this quilt. So it really isn't that big of a deal. But as you can see, this does end up being just a little bit of a manipulation whenever you have you know, this side, this angle going through the machine. And I'm glad you're able to see this because I, I really don't think that this would be that much easier with free motion quilting. Although I think an interesting test would be to switch and switch to free motion quilting and just compare because here the machine is doing the work. This is a walking foot. Uh, the walking foot is feeding and guiding. If I take my hands off the quilt, the quilt continues to move. You know, it continues to feed forward because that's what a walking foot does. So it's a very different situation when you're free motion quilting because you're pushing, you're actively making those designs, following the line and pushing to make that design. Here, at least, the walking foot is forming those perfectly even stitches. So I don't have to think about balancing my speed, balancing my hands, moving with the time of the needle. I can just let the walking foot walk. And my job is just simply to keep the quilt moving forward through the machine so I stitch these lines. So I think that would be an interesting test and I might switch. Uh, we might do one section with walking foot quilting and then one other section, maybe just a, a line or two with free motion quilting just to show the comparison. Uh, because I want you to see that there are multiple types of quilting that are open to you and wonderful to try. And it's not just one. Okay, so I've got one last little rotation here and a tricky spot. I stitched off into the batting and then now I need to pop back onto the quilt to quilt this line. So my goal here is to flatten out the quilt and get it nice and flat. Let me move this out so you can see it. I'm trying to get this section nice and flat so that way when I stitch back onto, I'm in the batting area, so if I stitch back onto the quilt, it's not gonna ripple, it's not gonna have a problem. There we go. And whenever things feel weird or lumpy, your hands don't feel right, you know, take a second to adjust and stop and Play with it until it feels right. This is something I will rotate a quilt when I'm free motion quilting. You know, if it doesn't feel right to me, then I'm probably not gonna produce the best looking stitches. So that's one of those things too. Sometimes you still have to rotate even when you're quilting with free motion quilting. And the theory with free motion quilting is you should be able to stitch in all different directions and never have to rotate the quilt. But I promise you, I don't know any quilt that I've ever quilted with any style of quilting that I haven't had to rotate around and wiggle, you know, and fiddle with on my home machine. Okay, last little line here, stitching off into the batting. 
There we go. Okay, so that was a little bit of an arm wrestling match, <laughs> but not bad. Really, this is not bad. Uh, I would say if the quilt was significantly larger, then you might want to pick something different through that section. You know, this is all about picking the right designs to use for your quilts. Uh, and now you know, you can see exactly what would happen if this quilt was even bigger, you'd have even more bulk in that arm. Okay. So now I am darkening another line here, just so that way I have it marked and I can clearly see what I'm doing. And this is how we're gonna move on with matrix. We have stitched one wiggly line and we bounced from point to point. This is from edge to edge. So this is our quilting space. We've got it outlined here and we're bouncing from edge to edge across. That's how we're making the design. So to move on with it, all we have to do is pull up thread along another line and bounce from edge to edge, basically echoing the first line. So that's what we're gonna do. Start in the center, pull up your thread on that point and stitch another line. I always like to drop my needle down just exactly right so I know where it is. Make sure I start on the right foot. And that's the thing, you know, don't get in too much of a hurry. It's a process, yes. And, you know, think about just how much faster that you're able to knock this out than you would if you were hand quilting this. I mean, this would take, you know, weeks if not months to hand quilt it. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that perspective that the speed of the machine is giving us as we work on it. Okay, so I'm aiming for that next point. And I think this will probably be a little bit of a tricky angle here. This is one of those things. I think when you figure out what angle feels challenging or ends up with a lot of quilt in the arm of the machine, go on ahead and knock that out first. You know, it's kind of like eating your vegetables. <laughs> you know, eat your vegetables first, then you get dessert, then it gets easier. And then everything feels nice from there on. And notice that sometimes, sometimes things get bulky here in front of the machine. Sometimes things are not flat. You know, sometimes you got a big wad of stuff here and it's hanging off the front of the table too. But so long as this area about an inch or two in front of the foot is flat and, you know, squished flat to the tabletop, you're ready to quilt. And then just watch the angle of your hands and if you start feeling like your wrists are hurting or something like that, take a break. You know, this would be something that uh, if I was quilting and kind of giving myself rewards, like, okay, I gotta go and knock out an entire line of matrix and then I can go have a cup of tea. <laughs> I give myself little rewards like that whenever I, uh, I have a quilt that's tricky or, you know, I'm kind of trying to avoid it, then uh, I, I'll, do something like that and then I know, okay, well it only takes me 10 minutes, I can kind of time myself, it only takes me 10 minutes to knock one of these out and you know, before long I'm completely done with it and I don't even have to think about it. So that's a tip that I use a lot. I use that especially when I'm doing very dense quilting and it just feels like I'm getting absolutely nowhere with it. Uh, then I'll kind of put myself in jail and say, okay, you quilt through all of this section and then, you know, go watch funny videos on YouTube or something. <laughs> you gotta give yourself the right incentive to get it done. Okay, so there we go, rotate it around again. And I do think that it will get easier as you get to the edge. And notice that I'm not pulling the whole quilt down through the arm of the machine. I've got it kind of rolled up here, kind of accordion pleated and rolled. And it's up to you whether you like actually like taking it out of the machine and rolling, rolling like a log or just doing what I'm doing. And that's just kind of um, squishing it in and out as needed. And I like it this way simply because it's less formal. I always find when I take the quilt out of the machine and, and really roll it, roll, roll it up, then I, I just feel like it's kind of stuck that way and it's harder for me to manipulate. But play with it. All of this stuff is worth playing with. All of this stuff is just different skills to learn, different ways to fill the design. Now I can, I'm catching myself, I'm getting comfortable and I'm starting to kind of twist that quilt around and follow that curve without stopping. And I just need to watch out 
if I start to see any kind of rippliness and notice that curve is not quite as pretty <laughs> as the rest of them because I'm speeding up now. Now I gotta watch out for that. Okay, so that is how I'm gonna continue to quilt matrix. You can see how I'm just bouncing from point to point. Let me switch to free motion quilting and just show you how this will be different if you decided to free motion quilt this instead. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is slide the quilt completely off the machine and I'm gonna lift up the Supreme slider. This is a Queen Supreme slider and I'm gonna move it so that it is covering the feed dogs just like that. I'm gonna take the walking foot off and switch it out for a darning foot. And this is a foot that's designed to hover over the feed dog so it doesn't put nearly as much pressure on the machine. Now settings that I'm gonna change, all I'm gonna do is take my stitch length and take it down to zero. That's it. So it was at 1.5 for walking foot quilting. Now I've dialed the stitch length down to zero for free motion quilting. Uh, and I do not drop my feed dogs for free motion quilting. I leave them up. I just find that that gives me better tension on this machine so I don't mess with my feed dogs. I just lower that stitch length to 1.5 millimeters. Okay, so rather than finish off this other line that I started because I know it's easier feeling in that direction, I'm gonna start that third line of matrix. This is the last tricky hard one because I know that I want you to see the difference in rotation. With a walking foot, we always have to have the quilt facing forward. With free motion quilting, we don't have to rotate so much. But the balance of that is you have to then constantly be keeping your hands in time with the speed of your machine. So here's what I mean by that. As I speed up, I need to move my hands a little faster. And if I slow down my machine, I will need to move my hands slower. And it's a balancing ratio between that needle bouncing up and down and my hands moving that creates the size of the stitches. And so if one of those things gets out of whack, then I'm gonna end up with stitches that are inconsistent. Okay, so here is where, if I was walking foot quilting, I'd be shifting the whole quilt back around in a really awkward angle. But because I'm free motion quilting, I can just stitch backwards. And I can stitch those curves without stopping. I'm just pulling the quilt backwards and stitching that curve at the same time. Now I'm kind of aiming for that point and hitting that point. But take a look, my stitches got bigger, noticeably bigger because I was kind of focusing on that point and focusing on that curve and I wasn't thinking as much about my hands and my hands started moving just a little bit fast for the speed my needle was running. So that's why those stitches got noticeably bigger than the other ones I stitched with my walking foot. So you can see that quilting with free motion quilting is always going to be a balancing ratio and it's also going to be just a little bit trickier to get those perfect beautiful looking even stitches because it's always balancing speed and movement. However, it sometimes feels easier to do it because you don't have to have those awkward angles shifting your quilt through the machine. Here I can leave the quilt in place as I stitch this design and it's feeling actually continually easier as I stitch down because there's less and less quilt in the arm of the machine. I don't have to rotate at all. Now, certain situations like right now, I can't really see what I'm doing. I, the angle that I'm stitching is almost directly behind the machine. And I'm gonna have to crane my neck down just a bit in order to see it properly. And while I'm focusing so much on direction and curves and angle and all that good stuff, I might not be paying nearly as much attention to my stitches and that kind of thing. So it's constantly, it's, it's just one of those things. You gotta just make the choice that works the best for you and consider trying both types of quilting on this quilt just to see what works better. I don't think that there's a right or wrong choice. I don't think there's even a better choice. Like one is better or worse than the other. 
Uh, well, I mean, there's only really one bad choice and that is just not finishing your quilt, you know, putting it away and saying, oh, this is too hard and not finishing your quilt. You know, no matter what you do, please try different methods and find one that works for you and find one that will allow you to finish your quilt quickly. So here I'm gonna rotate things around. I can kind of shift it through the machine and then finish up these lines of quilting. So basically what we've done, we stitched the V shape through both sides. That was one line of the matrix. Then we stitched another V shape going in this direction and a second one. So all the matrix is finished through this area and you can see that beautiful texture. Now to finish it off, all I need to do is stitch two more lines of quilting, pulling up thread where I started those other lines. So here I'll tie off these thread tails and bury them so that way they're nice and secure in the middle layer of the quilt. So again, drop my needle down, bring the threads up. So it doesn't matter what style of quilting I'm doing, that's always the way I begin. Bring that bobbin thread up to the surface because otherwise it will make a mess on the back of your quilt. You cannot see it. It could also cause you know a thread knot right at the beginning. If you've ever gotten started stitching, and heard a really nasty noise when you got started stitching, well, that's usually a sign that your machine has just gagged and made a bird's nest on the back of the quilt. And you don't wanna leave that in. That's a point of, of instability and security. You wanna go ahead and pick that out so the back of your quilt looks as nice as the front. Okay, there we go. Smoothly hit that point. And now my lines have gone just a little faint through here, so I'm gonna darken it up just like so, and continue quilting. Now one thing I want you to see is how I place my hands on the quilt. Notice that I spread my hands out a little bit further for free motion quilting because I'm making that bigger movement and spacing things out just a little bit more. So my hands make a, a wider hoop here on the machine, uh, on, the, on the quilt, on the tabletop, and that allows me that range of movement because basically with free motion quilting, if I take my hands off this and stitch, the machine's not gonna do anything. The quilt is not gonna move because by covering up those feed dogs and turning the stitch length to zero, nothing is going to feed the quilt forward. You know, it is basically going to set still and you'd make a knot. <laughs> That's why I'm not gonna demo that because it would end up making a big knot on the back of the quilt. And it's just that, dif that difference between free motion quilting and walking foot quilting. And it's really interesting because free motion quilting, the idea is to go in all different directions, you know, and to be able to move the quilt and not have to worry about what's facing forward, you know, to be able to stitch forward and backwards in all directions. Now, not all machines like this, you know. I had a machine once that if I tried to stitch that line backwards, uh, it would have broken thread. It would have broken thread a long time ago. So this, sometimes you might kind of be sold a, a false bill of goods when it comes to free motion quilting as far as how wonderful and amazing it is. You know, you might be told that you should be able to quilt in all directions and then find on your machine that you can't because it just doesn't like it, you know? In truth, when we're free motion quilting, we're doing something our, our machines were not really designed to do. We're stitching and not letting the machine guide, we're guiding. You know, that's all on us. Okay, so that was that last line. Now I'm gonna quickly switch back to walking foot quilting to finish up that last line for this section. So again, slide the quilt out of the machine completely. When I do a reset, I just like to reset everything. Move the slider over because now we're using the feed dogs. Take that darning foot off and replace it with a walking foot. And with a walking foot, you always want to make sure this little arm slots into the needle bar so it can go at an angle here. And sometimes I have to wiggle my needle bar just a bit to get everything lined up. So I'm sure that little arm is hooked up. And I'm also lined up so that the foot can be hooked to the machine too. There we go. That looks good. And then make sure also to change your stitch length if you accidentally forget and 
leave your stitch length at zero, then you're not gonna be stitching anything and it'll make a mess on the back of your quilt. So make sure to switch that stitch length and take that up to 1.5 millimeters and that's what we do for walking foot quilting. Okay, here we go. This has really been an adventure. I've never done this in a video before. I've never switched from one style of quilting to the other uh, in one shot and one go. So this has been fun. Uh, and I really hope that this is good instruction and that you can see the difference in the balance between these you know, different styles of quilting. You can see the advantages of both of them and also the disadvantages of both of them. So I'm back to having the quilt kind of tucked up here in the arm. And I'm also back to watching out for those curves. So lift up the foot every once in a while to take some of the pressure off that quilt. So that way I don't start getting any pleats or ripples or whiskering, anything like that. There we go. And now a little rotate. It would be interesting to go back and uh, time the, the two different versions, you know, like, uh, so if I stitch through this, is it actually faster with one type of quilting than the other? To me personally, here talking through it and, and teaching through it, they don't feel particularly faster or slower, you know, at least from my perspective, just having done this right now, it doesn't feel like walking foot quilting is so much slower and it doesn't feel like free motion quilting is so much faster, which is usually the perception. I certainly had that perception about free motion quilting for a long time, is that, oh, it's so much faster and you can do so much with it. But I, I really don't think that's the case. The thing about free motion quilting, and I can even tell the line that I stitched with that style of quilting because my stitches are not consistent. And I think that's really interesting because that's the thing that drives a lot of quilters crazy. You know, we want those nice, perfect, beautiful stitches that our machines naturally produce. And, you know, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of focus and concentration to keep your uh, lines of stitching, your, your spacing and everything nice and even. And I admit, I was a little distracted as I stitched those lines and my stitch length got a little off. And I think that's okay to admit that. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that happens to everybody. So I'm coming up on my last line, and I am putting my foot down a bit here, I gotta say. I know this tutorial's gone a little bit long, so I am putting my foot down and I'm probably rotating this just a little bit less than I would usually. But you can see that with walking foot quilting, you're always gonna have to stop. You're always gonna have to do that pivot. You're always gonna have to shift things around in order to face that next direction because it's always gotta go facing forward. How the machine feeds your fabric forward, that's always the way it's gotta go. Okay, so we've got one last little section to finish, and that is the corner. And the corner is a very fun, simple design. It's basically these same curving lines, but we're going to stitch it all coming to the same point. So I'm gonna shift over here, and this might be something else that you wanna try. Stitch maybe one corner, with walking foot quilting and stitch the other corner with free motion quilting and just see which one is easier. So here we go, I'm gonna pull up right on that purple point. I've got a nice curvy line here marked and I'm gonna stitch from that purple point all the way off to this corner of the quilt. I'm going ahead and take out these pens so that way I can easily see what I'm doing and flatten out the quilt and get it all ready to go. There we go, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna slow down a little bit too because when you're stitching in the corners, it's really easy to pull too hard and maybe cause some distortion. So I'm gonna be really careful not to do that. Try and stay on this, and, and I made this actually a pretty intensely curvy curvy line here, so it's gonna take a little bit of rotation, stopping and shifting in order to stitch that all the way through. There we go. And I kind of marked a little dot here where I knew that's probably where my binding's gonna end up overlapping. So I'm gonna hit that point and stitch off into the batting. And this one's gonna go pretty quick because I'm not gonna stop to tie off and bury all those thread tails. I'm just going to clip these short 
and leave the loose threads here on the surface of the quilt. I will tie all of those off at the same time at the end and that'll be my like last hurrah. <laughs> Sit down and tie up all the thread tails. There we go. So I'll show you one more of these. Pull up thread, drop the needle down, flatten everything out, make sure it's nice and smooth, and then stitch that line. And you could change this up. If you wanted to try different designs in the corners, if you wanted to play around with any of the designs from the Walking Foot book, this would be a great place to play. You know, it's a small area. It's right on the corner of your quilt. It's gonna be an easy place to you know, stitch off into the batting so you don't have to tie off as many thread breaks. So this would be a great place to play if you wanted to. And the, the one line to really watch out for is gonna be this last line. I'm gonna stitch this one just so that way you can see it. This last line here right on the edge is gonna be the trickiest and you might remark it after you think about it and plan it a bit. I have a line that's kind of curving in here just a bit right along this edge and I think I'm gonna change the design ever so slightly. So the line that I have is just kind of making a, a gentle arch. I'm going to bring it down and have it run a little bit longer parallel to the side of the quilt and then I'm gonna have it actually come off before that edge. And the reason is I just want a little bit more stability right here on the edge of the quilt. I think that's gonna work better. I think that's gonna look better. The binding might cover up a good bit of this and that's okay. That's just what I think it needs to look like and how I think it will work best. And then now that that line is stitched, the next line that runs between the two will be that much easier to knock out. So that's it for Quilting Matrix on Prism Path. I hope you learned a lot and that you will give this two different types of machine quilting a try. I hope that you'll try walking foot quilting and see how that feels. And I hope that you'll try free motion quilting and see how that feels and compare and contrast the two. You'll never know which type of quilting you like best until you try them both on one quilt. So that's it for this quilting tutorial and that's it for the Prism Path Baby Quilt. We've gone from start to finish on this project. We pieced it together, we learned how to mark the designs, and then now we have quilted it. And I cannot wait to see your version of this quilt. I hope that you'll share it with me. Send me an email at leahday.com slash contact. Now, if you're just getting started, you've just run across these videos and you'd like to make this quilt too, you can find the quilt pattern in the book, Explore Walking Foot Quilting with Leah Day. This book comes with seven beautiful quilt projects that'll teach you loads about machine quilting on your whole machine. And it includes 30 walking foot quilting designs to get you started. So come and check it out at leahday.com walkingfoot. Until next time, let's go quilt.